This Lexus IS350 F Sport is possibly the best looking car that I've reviewed in the last two years. The downside, however, is it comes with a naturally aspirated V6 engine, and well, it's bringing that naturally aspirated, antiquated technology to a modern turbocharged fight. So today we're gonna see if the old dog can keep up with the new, the new puppies. We'll start where we usually do, behind the wheel. Okay, so I know I said this is a naturally aspirated V6, and it is 3.5 liters of naturally aspirated roaring thunder, and it, it makes a pretty punchy 311 horsepower and 281 pound-feet of torque. Power goes through an eight-speed automatic gearbox, which is a bit lazy, and it heads to all four wheels. Makes a zero to 60 sprint good for about 5.6 seconds, and five and a half seconds doesn't sound objectively all that slow. And if you compare it to the outgoing 2021 Mercedes C300, it would be on par. However, the Audi A4 is doing it, I think just under five seconds, and then the BMW 330, yeah, that's 5.2, so about half a second difference, and that's significant. That's the benefit of having forced induction peak torque around 2,000 RPM rather than 5,000. So it's not the quickest, and that can be attributed to the missing low down torque you get from a turbocharger, but the fact is it doesn't have a turbocharger and it has two more cylinders, which means it does Lexus things pretty well, like... Well, like that. Now, I'm not gonna go ahead and say that this is complementary to their five liter V8s in any capacity. Those are euphoric in their sound. However, it's not a bad tone and it does kind of change in its character and its warmth as you climb the rev band. It revs out to about just under, I don't know, 7,000 and right around that 4,000 mark is when you really start to get kind of that little change in that little higher snarl that you would get from the V8. And you kind of get that resonance here as well. It's just kind of nice and adds a little bit of character in something that stands out from a turbocharged 2 liter. Sound and theater have always been the Lexus staple for me. Wrap me in a luxurious interior and assault my ears with a nice induction and exhaust tone, and I'm good. But let's talk dynamics. But let's talk dynamics, and now this IS is 200 pounds shy of being 2 tons, so it comes in at 3,800 pounds, which is by no means light. However, it does have decent brakes. The feel is nice and progressive in the pedal. It's not too bitey or stabby, and the steering is actually pretty decent. It's not overweighted, but you do get a sense of what ha what's happening you know, under your front wheels, which is always nice. Now, tip-in is good. It's got a multi-link rear suspension that helps put power down pretty well, and then you got the power to rev out a little bit with that 311 horsepower. The problem, though, is twofold, and one, it's the gearbox. It's the eight speed, and I know I've complained about this in the RCF as well, it's just, it's a little bit lazy on upshifts, and unless you're in full max track outputs and you know downshifting at the rev line, then yeah, it's just kind of lazy. The other problem I have is defeatable in the sense that it's, well, it's the stability control and traction control. Now, you can turn this off, but if you leave traction on, which most people will, especially in a car like this, if you go anywhere near the throttle, around mid-corner, the computer is just going to cut all the power. It just is. You cannot put power down mid-corner if you're even anywhere near having an input in the steering wheel. And that just kind of sucks the fun out of it. But this is a Lexus at the end of the day, and they're not pretending to be sports cars. So let's talk about some more Lexus-y things. Now, like I said in the intro, this is a stunning looking car. And to be honest, you have to see it in person for it to actually do justice. It's not gonna translate on screen that you're seeing right now. And it's all down to the proportions. The design language finally fits in a cohesive manner. You have this sharp and jagged angular front. It's sharp, it's aggressive, it's sporty. You go around to the profile, it's a nice classic sedan shape. The wheels fit perfectly, especially with this kind of matte black finish with this sonic silver or whatever it's called. And then the best thing is the rear hips. They're flared, they're wide, they look aggressive, they look mean, and it just looks really good. So, with a two inch taller hood and a five liter V8 and quad stacked exhaust out the back, 
yeah, it's pretty much the best looking sedan out there. Ah, okay. And then moving on to the interior is where Lexus really shines. And to be honest, there isn't a huge departure from the previous generation. Your back seat is big enough to inhabit normal sized adults as long as you're not traveling cross country. And then up front, the seats are comfy. It's a, it's a tight cabin, I won't lie. The cockpit is pretty tight with this kind of center stack bolstering and it's, it's nice and padded in leather, but you will hit your knee on it. I'm 6'1 and I hit my knee on the bottom of the steering wheel getting in. So it's not like it's super roomy, but it kind of gives it that sporty feel. Then on your center stack here, and this is what I'm talking about when it's not a huge departure from the previous generation. You have a nice, you know, newer head unit that's, you know, kind of tablet style and that's fine, but this whole center stack right here is the same, but, but it has my favorite climate control inputs of really any car. And then down here you have your heated seat, your cooled seat and your heated steering wheel on these, you know, super easy and <laughs> right there in front of you buttons. Now you do have the trackpad style infotainment, which is a little bit of a bummer because we saw in the leaked NX that's coming in, it gets a full touchscreen unit, which ideally will be a little bit more navigable, but the older infotainment will, will, will do, I suppose. And then the last thing I want to mention is the fully digital gauge cluster. When you turn the car on, the little circle does slide over to the side, which is always fun and cool. But when you switch it over into Sport or Sport Plus, it doesn't move over and get extra sporty. But I guess you got to save something for the LC, don't you? Ultimately, the build is superb, as you'd expect from Lexus, and it's the small attention to detail that really wins me over with these cars. But I do wish it had a more modern looking dash and a bigger sunroof. Okay. So let's do some housekeeping as we head into final thoughts here. Now, this Lexus IS, it is a new generation for 2021 and it is slower than all of its competition. Uh, it does pretty much return the same fuel economy at about mid 20s combined. And it's just not quite as dynamically adept as something like a BMW uh, or a Mercedes. And that kind of comes down to what we talked about with the gearbox and the stability control being a little bit intrusive. And you can defeat some of those things, but it's just not quite as sharp as the competition, but it is after all a Lexus. Now, with that being said, these are the places where it really shines. Exterior design, like I've been preaching this entire video, looks fabulous. I love the color. I don't usually go for silver cars, but it looks fantastic with this F-Sport package. Gloss black grill, black wheels, multi-spoke, looks spectacular. And then there's the interior. And this, I think, goes a long way. And this is a big selling point for a lot of Lexus models. They're just special. They're just more unique. Whereas you get into something like a BMW and it's the same interior, same dash, same everything, same inputs across their entire lineup from a $50,000 three series to a $150,000 seven series, it's the same. You don't get that in the Lexus. You get something special. You get the wood on top of your steering wheel. You get kind of the quilting or the perforations in your seat, which is nice. And then you get kind of the nice door cards that has a little bit of a pattern to it. It's just a little bit more special. So if you're looking for something that is stunning to look at and exceedingly comfortable to be in, and you don't mind a little bit of trade-off behind the wheel, then this is your car. But for me, I'll be waiting till fall where I can get into this, but it'll have a V8. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up, subscribe. I'll see you next time.